Biden warns Iran not to attack Israel. Yeah, so Iran's been threatening a retaliationary strike for... So on the 1st of April, Israel um, bombed Damas uh, Damascus and a consulate building belonging to Iran killed some of their generals. And since then, Iran's been threatening to retaliate. And yeah. Joe Biden's saying that if, if Iran attacks Israel in any way, um, the United States will, sta will stand squarely with Israel. So, I mean, the long and short of it is... Uh, there's a risk of the US getting dragged into a regional conflict. Um, em, the bit I don't get, and I spoke to, uh, to Jay about this upstairs, is as follows. I thought that Joe Biden really might use uh, the strength that he could show diplomatically to sort of quash a little bit of Trump. A lot of mixed messaging. Mm. Uh, first of all, you better not, Israel, you need to, you're breaking law, stop doing this, it's a humanitarian crisis. Next day, ironclad support against Iran. Mixed messaging from that, Joe Biden, to be fair, no? That was exactly my thought. The last few days yeah. have been very, very mixed messaging. Are you, are you going over the top here, Joe? I don't know what you're thinking about. Uh, exactly. And, you know, what, what does he actually mean? Because I think he needs to be clearer on this. I think that, you know, it's not actually... Probably sums up how, not un how unclear okay, he probably he is. is. He, he's in a bit of a difficult position, though, as well. I think Netanyahu is becoming a, a liability for Israel, but also for the United States. Yeah. I mean, he, Joe Biden has to stand with Israel against Iran. But at the same time, he doesn't want to be in this be put in this position Guess by he's Netanyahu. Guess he's got a with the Democratic Party as well. He's got to try and please all sides, isn't he? Yeah. That attack on the consulate, how has that played out in terms of geopolitics? Like, what what's the, the general feeling about that? Because, obviously, it should certainly be understood that if Iran was being bombed, they're likely to at least threaten mm. to retaliate. Yeah, I mean, but it's, it's happened to Damascus, which is, you know... Syria is a dictatorship. It's allied with Iran. They've been there's been tit for tat. So Hezbollah has been attacking Israel for a yeah. long time. So I mean, it, the, the the diplomats in in Syria. I mean, it's kind of fair game. But if it escalates into attacks in Iran or in uh, Israel itself, then it becomes a kind of more regional war, and then the United States potentially gets dragged in, which is which is worrisome for all of us because yeah. again, Russia can get dragged into that as well. Should we stay with President Biden now? Yeah, go. Because he said that he's considering dropping the prosecution of Julian Assange. What can you tell us about this story? Yeah, so um, yeah, there's an extradition uh, potentially ha been ongoing for a long time um, for Julian Assange being on 17 ex ex espionage charges. Uh, for Julian Assange to be extradited to the United States. So he was a long time uh, cooped up in the Ecuadorian embassy. That came yeah. to an end. Um, and Biden's, you know, mulling over the idea of maybe this, this case is actually going to be dropped against Assange. There's, there's, Electioneering? I don't know, really. But it's, I, I can understand there's been protests from the Australian government, for example, um, to the US saying, you know, the, these charges should be dropped and certainly he should not face the death penalty. Um, but on the other hand... I think we, we should remember that Julian Assange, you know, some of the information he did give to, uh, he did release, um, jeopardised the lives of people in Iran, Iraq and um, uh, other countries. People who'd helped the West then subsequently disappeared mm. in those countries. So, yeah. thoughts? Yeah, it's I go back and forth on the Assange one. As a, as a man, as a personality, I'm not... I'm not uh, uh, keen on him and I find him sort of slightly uh, suspicious but I also feel kind of just ideologically I feel that you know releasing the truth about things there's something right about that so I you know um, I, I think can I just point out for people tuning in, the Australian link he's is Australian and the Australian yeah, yes. government is saying he's ours sending home because he's in custody in England yeah. uh, Emma can we go to the yeah. Express yeah. Um, patients are benefiting from quicker treatment which crucially is freeing up hospital beds in a radical shake-up of healthcare. Now, forgive me, having just spoken to Roy Lilly, if I sound cynical. Mm. I can't get away from the fact that the NHS isn't fit for purpose. We've got an older population, a bigger population. We seem to be... We revere it. Oh, this great... It's a fantastic idea. What does that mean? Oh, benefit, be, patients are benefiting from quicker treatment, which is freeing up hospital beds. I'm 58. I've never worked in the NHS. My four-year-old son could have told you that. What's this about? Well, exactly. This is a radical new Quicken plan. Quicken up and you'll get more done. Yes. Who knew? Speed things up. It's called the SDEC, Same Day Emergency Care. Suddenly, it seems that they're able to treat, uh, diagnose, treat and discharge people on the same day. Which begs the question, Jeremy Carl, why weren't they doing this before? Yeah. They're now starting to get more and people And begs in. the question back, Emma Wolf. Precisely. What, what, the, I mean, Nick, what, that's what ridiculous, has, man. Oh, what has phone. changed? I apologise. Sorry, my phone. Put your phone on silent, Sorry. Kyle. My there goodness. Go. Okay, I'm uh, professional. Yes. So what, what has actually changed here? What, what is this radical plan and who, who's implemented it? Well, these are same-day units. It means that basically patients don't have to stay in overnight. It means that doctors, as I say, can diagnose, treat and get people out 
in and out, same day, which is wonderful for patients. Freeze up, you know, we've got millions. This is the NHS is in crisis. We've got millions on waiting lists. We yeah. really, really have. People need especially emergency care because of the problems in primary care, because of the problems in social care. Yeah. Mm. People are ending yeah. up in A and E needing help. Really Often interesting that Roy Lilly, elderly, ex, ex, mostly elderly. Ex, ex yeah. chief executive of the trust, talked about you know making working conditions easier. I also mm. asked him about money and he went it needs to be spent better. This is a classic example, is it not, of common sense, man. Yeah, I mean, this is this feels a bit like a puff piece uh, because as the, the item you had just before, you had someone saying that, you know, the, there's a big recruitment crisis in mm. the NHS. You've got 47% of staff looking for jobs outside the, the NHS. And we have, you know, one in five nursing roles not, not filled at the moment. So the, the thing is, you have to make the NHS somewhere people actually want to work. And I think that will go a long way to actually sort, sorting yeah. it out, making it improving its results. Emma, I just want to move us on now because I really want to cover this story mm. in the mirror. Caroline Flack's mother has spoken out saying, I will get the truth. Can you tell yeah, us Yeah, I mean, I hadn't realised there was there, there's real kind of controversy around her arrest. She, so Caroline was arrested in December 2019. She was cautioned about the this alleged assault on her boyfriend and then took her own life in February 2020, three months later. Um, and her mother has been on this campaign for about four years now to, to find out really what went on around that arrest because there was an officer present who then didn't give evidence later the arrest i think the caution was overturned police did not record why they appealed against the cps caution uh, there was another officer present at the arrest and so the mother the, um, caroline's mother um what's her name christine yep. wants to know really what went on around her daughter's um, because it, it caused real distress for uh, Caroline Flack. She stepped down from Love Island immediately. Another Channel 4 programme that she'd already filmed was cancelled. Yeah. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Channel 4. Yeah, Channel yeah, 4. With you. Yeah, um, was cancelled. And obviously it was, t it was a terrible time for her, those last few months. Yeah. And so there's, a, there's questions that need to be answered, her mother was Jane, saying. No Please. words, love to... to uh, don't get me on this. Yeah, uh, I just can't I, imagine... Talk, I, I've, spent, I've spent a long time arguing with people about, you know, duty of care to all sorts of people in all sorts of systems. Caroline Flatt was a wonderful girl who was yeah. not looked after by anybody at the end. And I'm not talking about her mother was an amazing human being. Yeah. It's a talented, talented girl who needed help, OK? And whether it's the police or certain television, or, it doesn't matter, OK? Don't get me on it, but what a loss. Mm. I a, loved her. A, yeah, a huge loss. I loved her. And, you know... Good Just, for Chris, Christine for actually Yeah, good fighting, for Christine, actually, fighting because you know what? To it's, get the it's, not a, it's not about pointing the finger. It's about a kid that was struggling, right? Yeah. That, I, think sometimes, I think sometimes we talk about, oh, everybody struggles. This girl was struggling, she's got nothing. That's an opinion. Yeah, and also for the same mistakes, if there have been any mistakes, uh, to not be made again. Right, we've got about 30 seconds. I just really want to talk about this final story, What's this? Emma. Um, Jan Leeming, a Jan TV, Leeming? TV broadcaster, has said that TV is mangling language and because she, she suggested that she no longer gets work because of her essentially posh accent. She's basically saying, she says, I'm too well-spoken, so 82-year-old Jan Leeming to newsreader. I think you might don't be, know. she's not posh enough. New, newsreader, <laughs> stage, TV actress as well. Yes. She's basically saying, you know, because of RP, because of received pronunciation, she speaks like I do, basically. Yeah, you, you've got that perfect kind of RP. Thing. I um, mean, you're not very posh. You're I'm sort not, of no, semi -posh. What's your accent, James? Uh, a, a twinge of Somerset, I think. Yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, right. There. Right, right, there. There. Right, 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 But I don't think that's why. I mean, I think there, there's some... Are you so, saying it's because she's 82? No? Maybe. Some oh, not JB. that that's right, but some research came out recently saying that TV has actually got posher recently. Has in it? Recent years. Yeah, well, all of these, prof all the cultural professions have. Oh, well, better so I don't think well, that's, I don't you, think that's, that's why. you stuff, that's, mate. That's isn't it? Let's get on big one on Blackpool, have fun, <laughs> I like it, do like what? No, what? No, I was, my mother always taught me to speak the Queen's English. Yeah, me too. And I'm very, very happy to do it. Yeah. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, James. More in just yes, under an hour. Yes, they will be back in just under an hour. Yeah, they'll be back in an hour. Right, you at home, you've been getting in touch you with have. your views and opinions all morning. Earlier we were talking about West Streeting, who was waded into the, the so-called gender row, calling the NHS treatment, uh, some NHS treatment, I think it's worth pointing out, scandalous. Is he right to support the cast review, we've asked you? Uh, Sarah says he's only supporting the cast review because he knows which way the wind is blowing, he has zero principle. Malcolm says last year he agreed with it, now he doesn't. Not a surprise. We know it's election year. Mal, I sort of agree with you with all politicians. No, it... Suddenly there's a raft of policies from the Tories. Labour are moving, but, you know... I... I think, yeah, I think it's the other way around, actually, Malcolm. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's unclear exactly what, 
Malcolm's referring to there, but he certainly doesn't disagree with the report no. now. He does agree with it. Leo is interesting. Yes, Leo. Well, the, the name is interesting. No, no, oh, no, right. Leo, not as bad as Jeremy. <laughs> Leo says, after years of being on the wrong side, watching West Streeting and Labour scrabble to get on the right side shows how, opportuni how opportunistic our politicians are.